Hello and welcome back to another episode here at A View From The Bullins. And this is a Q&A show with myself, The Bobble, Ben Winstanley, Paul Draper and Steve Kelly. It's a full house for the Q&A show this evening. Uh, guys, we've had a lot of questions coming as always over on the uh, Patreon Gold and, and emails. Um, the first debate, and I think it is a debate now and I think it's worthy of, of a big conversation, is the fullback issue oh. and should Vitaly <laughs> Mikolenko be dropped? That is the question. From Adam Knowles, should Vitaly Mikolenko be dropped? And he's, he's with, with all due respect, Adam's not said place Ashley Young there or Nathan Patterson. It's just should Vitaly Mikolenko be dropped due to his lack of form? And I think we can all probably agree his form is, is, is arguably as bad as it's been for a long, long time at Everton. He is really, really struggling. Um, ben, I'll come to you first on this one. We spoke about it straight after the game. Uh, you know, after the 1-1 draw against Fulham on Saturday and we spoke about Vitaly Mikolenko's form and we thought first half he was arguably one of Everton's worst players. A little bit better second half, granted. But it is a debate now, isn't it? And, and it's a genuine debate. Simple. Should Vitaly Mikolenko be keeping his place in the team? Yes or no? Someone said to me after the game he's one of the worst players ever to get 100 apps for Everton. And I think that's a bit harsh. But yeah. he's, he's been questionable. I think we're starting to see the form of Michalenko when he first signed for Everton. I think all the defensive attributes we've seen last year have faded. I think that he's been very poor this year. He nearly gave me two or three heart attacks on Saturday mm -hmm. when he literally tried to give an assist to the Fulham player. Not once, but twice. Yeah. There was twice in that first half where he gave the ball away yeah. needlessly. And he just doesn't look comfortable on the ball whatsoever. And, you know, it's a sad state of reality that Ashley Young, who's 39 years of age is Everton's number one fullback this year. Probably, you're going to say, even last year, he was the most consistent fullback, played near enough the most games, yeah. probably played the best out of any fullback. And that's a credit to Ashley Young. So it's a big debate. What would I do Saturday? I think I would drop Michalenko. I think I'd play Ashley Young left back because I think he, he, he filled in well there at Leicester, got an assist. Probably plays better at left back mm. than he does right back. And you look to put in Patterson or Coleman for 60, 65 minutes. You know, we can't be rewarding players who are playing poorly. And that goes for everyone in this squad. If you're playing poorly, it needs to be questioned. Mm. So I think I would remove him. And I think I'd play Patterson or Coleman for 60, 65 minutes and then make that substitution. I think it would be Coleman, if anyone given the, the, the issues with Dice around Patterson mm. and, you know, not playing him. And I, I haven't seen anything from Patterson for two and a half years. Mm. We're coming up to three years for Mikalenko and Patterson being at Everton. This isn't, you know, a year down the line and he's being unfairly treated. This is three years in 2025. January 2022, we signed these two players. Neither have kicked on. Neither have cemented a place. You know, is it Mikalenko got one assist yeah. in, in 100 games? Mm, I think it's one assist. You know, That's it's, terrible. It, it's mm. not good enough. Ashley Young's got three in nine games this year. <laughs> mm. It's not good enough from your fullback. Well, I think the questions. issue with Mikolenko is, is I, I fully understand the point about the assists. And, but one thing you, you used to or would get with Mikolenko was that for all his, his failings going forward and beyond the halfway line, he would always be very, very solid. You know, a stay-at-home left-back is what I was always told. And he'd be very, very solid defensively. But we're, we're not even getting that at the moment, P, are we, with, with Vitaly Mikolenko? And it, it is now becoming a, a genuine worry. And, and Adam's absolutely right to bring it up. It's a genuine debate, and, and given the fact that Sean Deutsch has kept Michael Keane in the team based on form, well, it's double standards then, isn't it? Because, let's be honest, due to the lack of form of Vitaly Mikolenko, if we're going to go with Michael Keane stays in the team because of his form, well, then the lack of form of Vitaly Mikolenko should probably see him having a bit of a time out of the team. <coughs> well, I'm going to go back to what I said at the start of the season. I don't know if you remember, I think... He's just not being fit at all for me. I think mm. he, he hasn't recovered from his ankle injury and he's been playing. He hasn't been up to speed. Form has been awful. On the ball, we know he's not good enough. I think Fulham had it easy for NJ the other day. You just need a Kenny Tete and a Wobie to do a job on him. Oh, sorry, Kenny Tete. Kenny Tete, I think it was a Dana Traore. Double up on him. You know the fullback's not going to go past him. He's going to struggle. Kenny Tate, who's an exceptional defender, I always remember the performance. I think he was away at Chelsea last season, and he was absolutely exceptional, and mm. he was just as good on Saturday. But in terms of Mikhailenko, I just don't think he ever recovered from that ankle injury he got mm. at the derby. I don't think he's ever recovered from it. And when you get when you get bad ankles, 
it's really, really difficult to come back if you don't heal properly. And Mikhailenko's ankle obviously didn't heal properly because he got rushed back by Ukraine for the orders, which, as I've said on on, po- on pods before, I completely understood the the decision. I completely understood why the Ukrainian FA and himself wanted to rush it to get to get there for what it meant to them, not only as a group of players but as a nation, as a country, as an association with everything that's been going on for them. And then he got injured again. And if we're being honest, he probably got rushed back by Everton then in pre-season because there isn't another adequate left-back at the football club. If Everton had another fo- another left-back, another natural left-back, I think Vitaly Mikhailenko wouldn't be playing right now. Mm. I think you can say play young and maybe Coleman or Patterson at right-back. The issue is Coleman and Patterson aren't reliable. You can't rely on them. In 2024, Patterson due to... Obviously, he's been out since... Early April, I think it is. He hasn't yeah. kicked the ball since, nah. only for the under-21s. Coleman, because he's getting on, he's had a lot of big injuries in his career and they're starting to, to really get to him now, as you've said before. If Coleman, let's say, plays on Saturday, he can't train until the Wednesday, yeah, Thursday. Like number which is which is normal for a player at that age. And obviously all the all the issues and kind of and kind of hurdles he's had through his career with his le- <coughs> with his leg break, his dislocated leg at down at Leicester, all the niggles he's had throughout the years. So I think if Everton had a left back, a, a left back to cover Tyler McLenko, he wouldn't have been playing for the last few weeks. Mm. It's it's a, it's a fair debate, Steve. And just looking at Vitaly Mikhailenko, I mean, he's, he's 25, 26 in May. So by the end of the season, he'll be, he'll be 26. His contract ends in 2026. So heading into the summer, he will have one more year. Um, what, what, what would you look to do with Vitaly Mikhailenko? We spoke about the fullbacks and how important fullbacks are in the modern day era. And, you know, Everton's lack of, you know, attacking fullbacks or lacking uh, fullbacks that are willing to go beyond the winger and kind of get into the into the final third is, is, you know, a huge hindrance for us going forward. Would you look to maybe, and this might sound a bit harsh, but would you look to be cashing in on with Mikalenko with only a year left? Because you've got to make a decision. Ultimately, you either offer him a new contract at the end of the season or are actually going to be in another situation like you are with Dominic Calvert-Lewin? Yeah, I think <clears throat> my problem with Mikalenko is he, he just doesn't affect the game, really. He, 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 and it sounds really harsh in the kid, but he just doesn't really do anything in the game. It's kind of just like... If you look at it, even his crossing, I think it's like thirty six percent of his crosses are accurate crosses. Like for a, for a fullback, mm-hmm. that that's really low for a modern day fullback. Could you argue? Is it the way the manager plays? Do, does he play that way? But I'll be honest, I, I just don't see anything from from Mikalenko in regards to, especially offensively. I think he loses. If you look at it during the game, he loses the possession quite a lot as well. Gives the ball away a lot. He's not great with his passing as well. Um, for me. He's very panicky on the ball. I think we saw it, didn't we, on Saturday a few times where, like Ben said, there was one which he gave away on the edge of the box. I, I honestly don't know what he was doing, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, I think, I feel like I've said, I said this before on um, another show that we've done that the reality is the majority of this team are probably squad players. And I think he falls into that as well. Yeah. He's a good squad player. Is he a starter for me in the Premier League in the modern day Premier League fullback? No. The reality is, if you look at the likes of Aston Villa, the likes of Liverpool, your Arsenal, they're we're fullbacks like wingers. We our fullbacks don't cross the halfway line. Bar sorry, Ashley Young at the weekend, which which is a good which is a good ball in. But I'd probably look at dropping him this weekend against Southampton and playing Ashley Young on the left. I think we've seen Ashley Young away at Leicester. He did very well at left back. I thought he was, again he was arguably Everton's best player that day. Um, he arguably gives you more offensively than mm-hmm. Mikalenko. He can whip a ball in, good crosser of the ball as we've seen again at the weekend. So I think um, I think it's a position Everton need to sort desperately, if if, if not in January, uh, in the summer, one hundred percent. And to be honest with you, I think this weekend I'd, I'd probably take him out the firing line for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I think you could do with the break, yeah. Sometimes yeah. you're doing the player a favour by pulling them out and you're doing the right thing, yeah. just giving their body time to rest, mentally giving him time to switch off a little bit. And I always think, with all due respect, maybe maybe managers that have a little bit of a deeper squad, they, they pull a player at the right time and then put them back in at the right time. And I think Mikalenko would probably benefit from just a, just a couple of games. But, um, yeah, it's a, great, it's a great debate. I'd love to hear what everyone else thinks about Vitaly Mikalenko's uh, current form. <laughs>